Hi everybody, so now we're going to talk about evaluation tips for A2, right? So oftentimes in evaluation questions, I notice students uh, struggle to come up with detailed evaluation answers, right? You want to make sure answers have depth, your answers have detail to them. And so how can we do that? Well, I've got a little analogy that I think might help you, right? I want you to imagine when you're having, when you're writing an evaluation answer, you're having a mini debate with yourself. Right? It's like a debate, a discussion, an intense discussion with points fighting against each other. Right? That, that makes an evaluation essay exciting to read, something interesting to read. Try not to write in a style where you're just copying and pasting information out of your textbook onto the paper. Right? An examiner can quickly see that you're just memorizing and regurgitating information. What examiners love to see is a good discussion in your paragraphs, in your essay. Right? So here's an idea that you can possibly apply, right? a simple analogy. It's the burger analogy. Right? So this is the beginning of an amazing burger. Right? It starts with a patty. Or rather, it starts with the bread, and you've got a nice, thick, juicy patty, right? So that's the basics of a burger. You start with the bottom piece of bread and put a patty on top of it, right? And then you add maybe a bit of cheese. You spice it up with some cheese. Ooh, you've got some lovely, lovely, I think, what, what is that? Is that a piece of tomato and pineapple? Some, some fruit or vegetable right in between. Oh, some, some cabbage on top and dripping with mayonnaise right on the top of the burger and finally the top of the burger itself, right? So see, I'm getting hungry just talking about this, right? So this is how you build a good burger. In the same way, when it comes to building a good essay, you start with the basics and you work your way until you reach a full, comprehensive and lovely answer, right? So I'm going to give you an example of what that looks like. Level one, we're starting with the basics, the level one of a burger, just the bread and the meat, right? So let's say the question is evaluate the study by Schachter and Singer. First, let's start with a claim. Now, don't get confused. In my other videos, I talk about the PEEL method. That's just one method, right? This is a slightly different method. You can choose to use this method if you want. You can use the PEE method if you want. That's in a previous video. But this method is going to co cover slightly different analogy, right? So if I'm going to start with a claim, right? I'm asked to evaluate, right? So I'm going to discuss the strengths, weaknesses of, of the Schachter and Singer study. Let's start with this claim. The sample used by Schachter and Singer cannot be generalized from, right? So I'm arguing, the claim that I'm making is that their sample is not generalizable, right? Now, how do I add to that answer? So let me give a reason, okay? If I'm making that claim, right, this sample is not generalizable, uh, why do you say that, right? Well, this is because the Schachter and, Singer, Schachter and Singer only used male psychology students who were also rewarded with course credit for their participated, part, excuse me, participation. Right? So this is the reason that I'm saying it's not generalizable. Well, firstly, they're all male. And secondly, they, got, they actually got rewarded for cost credit. Right? Rewarded with cost credit for their participation. Right? That's why they're not so generalizable. They're very specific. Right? So in conclusion, I would say, please be cautious when applying the findings to other populations based only on males who were rewarded for their behavior. Right? So this is a problem. Right? I can't generalize it to every single population because I only studied males and only males who got rewarded. Right? So that's not a very good sample that's representative, right? So that's why I'm saying it's not generalizable. Now, this is the level one level answer, right? Is the most basic answer that you could possibly give. How can we, especially for A2 students, how can you develop this and bring it to the next level, right? For AS, you don't have to go that far, but for A2, right, if you want to start getting on A2, this is how you do it, right? For level two, you want to add a bit of cheese. So we keep the claim, the claims remains there, the reason remains, but now I'm going to add something, I'm going to add evidence, right? Schachter and Singer used participants who were all male college students taking classes in introductory psychology at the University of Minnesota. And I've got some friends from Minnesota, if you're listening, hi! Uh, most of the students in these classes volunteered and received two extra points on their final exam for every hour they served as participants, right? So can you see I've given evidence clearly from the study to show, to show the point that the sample is not generalizable. Why? Because they're all male college students, they're all from one university, they all volunteered and received the two extra credit points. So I'm giving evidence from the study to support my claim and reason, right? So this is the extra cheese that I'm adding to my burger, right? And I keep the conclusion as the same. Now, level three, let's add some vegetables. All right, getting ready. The claim remains the same. The reason remains the same. The evidence, as we just saw, now what can I add to that? I've got the evidence. Now remember, I'm going to talk about evaluation, right? So let me evaluate that. I'm going to give what is known as an evaluative comment. Now this can be a bit tricky for some students to write. Here's an example of something that I would say, right? The problem with this is that the male psychology students who are getting credit for their degrees by taking part are likely to show 
uncharacteristic behavior, different from females or non-students or people not being paid, by perhaps being more willing to give the researchers the findings they want. This is because they will be familiar with psychology studies and may notice cues the researcher unconsciously gives and are more likely to guess the researcher's aim. This is called showing demand characteristics, right? So because they're from a psychology background, right, because they're being paid for the study, they may be slightly hyper aware, right, and try and perhaps be desirable and show the researcher what they want to know. In fact, if you read Schachter and Singer's study, the participants admitted after the debriefing that they actually did not show as much anger as they could have because they were afraid of suffering a penalty or perhaps not getting the credit, right? And the conclusion can remain the same. Lastly, we go to level four. Now, the burger comes together with the foundation and all the way to the top, right? So what do we have? We've got the claim. The sample is not generalizable. The reason is because they're all psychology, male psychology students who receive credit. And the evidence is that they're all male psychology students taking introductory course uh, at the University of Minnesota. They volunteer and receive two extra credit points for the final exam. Evaluating this comment is because they're from psychology, because they're receiving credit, they may, may show extra uh, socially desirable behaviors, may try to please the researcher, demand characteristics, all that good stuff. Lastly, I would add a counter-argument. Now, this is for the even more advanced thinkers who are listening, right? You want to add a counter-argument to make your essay even more exciting? You can, right? A counter-argument would sound something like this. On the other hand, Schachter and Singer may have had limited resources, like a tight budget, and so they needed the convenience of an opportunity sample who happened to be their own students to be able to complete their research. Also, from this, initial, from this initial research, other studies could be done using different participants in different settings to provide more information on emotions. Right? So this is a counter-argument to say that, yes, I understand or I agree that, yes, the sample is small and you know there are problems with that, they may have shown some demand characteristics and so on and so forth. However, my counter-argument is that, well, perhaps they were on a tight budget and they had to use whatever was conveniently available and even so, you can always extend and other researchers can build upon this study, right? So that's my counter argument. And the conclusion then can remain the same. Please be cautious when applying the findings because it's only based on males who were rewarded for their behavior. It may not be generalizable to the population, right? So this is an example of a more in-depth, detailed answer with lots of stuff going on, right? It's a very exciting answer for someone to read. It's not just the same boring, oh, the sample is small, the samples are all men, it's not generalizable to women, and stuff like that. That's very, very, that's still at the AS level. It's very, very straightforward. When you go up to the A2 level, right, you need to start applying more critical thinking. You need to start thinking more deeply, providing more details, right? So this is a simple example. When you forget, just think about the burger example. Start small and then add layer after layer after layer of comment, right? So I like this claim, reason, evidence, evaluative comment, counter argument, and conclusion. Now, does that mean you have to follow this exact methodology? No. You could just have claim, reason, counter argument, and conclusion. That's absolutely up to you. I mean, it, it's really up to you to decide how you want to answer your question paper. This is just the way that I teach my students. And oftentimes, they don't even follow this exact. Even I don't follow this exact format, right? Sometimes it's hard to come up with an evaluative comment, perhaps, right? So I just go straight from evidence to counter argument. That's perfectly fine, right? Once again, start small, build it up, build it up, build it up, and add all your points until you get that one final perfect burger evaluation, right? Now, that's just an example. Again, I reiterate, it's just an example. You can choose to use it if you want. If your own lecturers have given you a different example, a different uh, a methodology to use when answering, feel free to use whatever works for you. In my previous videos, I talked about the PEEL method. You can use that as well, right? That carries over to A2 level as well. However, I feel personally that at the A2 level, when we deal with 10 mark questions, 12 mark questions, and so on, you need to give some level of depth, some level of critical thinking for your answers, right? Some other points to take note of. Please, when you encounter an evaluation question in your A2 syllabus, please evaluate comprehensively. You should have a minimum of at least three issues that you're going to discuss, right? Individual versus situational, nature versus nurture, determinism versus uh, free will, um, reductionism versus holism, issues of children in research, and, and so on and so forth, right? So there are a lot of things you can talk about. Make sure you talk about at least three of those issues, right? Always talk about the named issue. Oftentimes, questions will say, uh, make sure you talk about, you know, determinism. 
So make sure you make a comment about determinism accordingly, right? Plan, organize, and select proper examples. Make sure you plan your essays, right? If you have any blank paper with you, write on that blank piece of paper. Plan the skeleton of your essay very quickly so that when you want to write it out, it's clear in your head what points are going to go where. And make sure you choose proper examples. Don't choose examples from the wrong study, right? Show understanding when you write. Try not to write as if you're regurgitating information. Show the examiner that you really understand the content. You understand what you are talking about. And when you write with understanding, it shows. Right? Part B is usually the evaluation. Part A is usually a description question. So if you've ever seen an A2 examination question, it has a part A and part B. Part A is just a description. I might talk about, it, I'll talk about that in a future video. And then part B is the evaluation we need to evaluate the description that you previously gave. So make sure they are linked, okay? Link, always, always, I highlight that in red. Link your answers to the question, right? A lot of students miss out marks here because they give examples from the wrong study, right? So make sure your studies are always linked to the question, see what the question's asking, link it accordingly. A, a, a simple tip to keep in mind when you're having the evaluation questions in front of you is that you should imagine you're having a conversation with a friend and you want to discuss every possible point in that conversation. Right, so you're evaluating perhaps, for example, uh, pick something that you like to talk about, talk about it with your friend, and you want to convince them of every single point that you're mentioning. Let's say, for example, you have a favorite football team, right? I'm not going to mention any names, but let's say you have a football team in mind that you like a lot, right? Explain to your friend, hey, this football team is the best because so and so and so, right? So that person probably asks you, why, why is that so great? And then you explain with more evidence and you give them some details like, wow, this team has won, you know, all the Champions League trophies in the past 10 years and so on and so forth. I don't really watch football, but if you do, talk about football, right? Perhaps you like one brand of fast food over another. Maybe you think McDonald's is the best and you want to tell your friend, hey, did you know McDonald's is the best fast food? They've got the best french fries. And the evidence for that is because, come on, let's go and try some french fries. Wow, it's, it's, all, it's amazing flavor. And you know, um, um, in spite of that, you know, french fries are not very healthy, so you can't eat too much. That's a counter argument, right? The reason that you're giving is because they're fried in a specific way that makes them crispier than the other fast food outlets, right? So there's a lot of stuff you can talk about. Just imagine you're having a mini debate with a friend and you want to convince your friend as much as possible about this point, right? That's how you write your essays. And that's how you make your essays exciting and really full of detail, right? Because you're really trying to convince the reader about the evaluation that you're making, okay? I'm giving out some premium study notes uh, on a donation basis. If you want my personal copy of study notes, I'm giving out personal notes for cognitive learning and social uh, with others to be added later on. Uh, I also give some notes briefly on assumptions, applications, and psychology being investigated for the AS studies. Right, past year question papers and marking schemes for from 2018 to 2020, all downloaded and, and organized just for you. Uh, feel free to donate accordingly to unlock these amazing study notes at this tiny url.com slash premium notes, right? So fill up your name, your, your email address, and so on and so forth. And once you've paid and sent me the receipt, I will then send you a link to download all this information, okay? Uh, if you don't support me financially, that's absolutely fine. You can always support me non-financially by liking, commenting, and subscribing on my YouTube channel. And I really appreciate all your support. My name is Ross Stevenson, and I'll see you guys soon.